School Health Week is promoted and acknowledged from the 7th to the 11th of October 2024. Now, school health has received unprecedented attention in South Africa over the past five years, evolving from relative obscurity into a national priority program. It seeks to address multiple health needs of school age children across an age span of 12 years and encompasses so many different kinds of health interventions. Vahai to Dumelanga, very good evening. My name is Thabo and welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we unpack the importance of keeping our little ones healthy in school, physical health, nutrition, mental health and physical education. Joining us to kickstart this conversation is Ms. Feni Mutswani, who is the Deputy Director of the National Integrated School Health Programme at the National Department of Health. She joins us via Zoom this evening. Member Tony, much appreciated for taking the time. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tabo. Good evening to you and good evening to the viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, let's talk about what exactly is uh, School Health Week. And maybe if you can please take us through the significance of this initiative. Okay. Uh, School Health Week is actually a campaign uh, that happens annually on the second week of uh, October. Uh, the aim of the School Health Week is to intensify routine school health services that are delivered in public schools for uh, grade parts up to grade 12 uh, throughout the educational phases. And the aim of the week is to actually try and identify early the barriers to teaching and learning and to have those early interventions. Yes, uh, so what is the department's role in uh, you know, ensuring that all the kids, including parents and guardians, understand the, pop the purpose of this week? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, at the beginning of each uh, school or calendar year, the departments of health, education and social development actually um, sensitize the parents, the learners, and the school community about the school health program that is delivered in schools. This is important because we need parents and caregivers and the learners themselves to actually understand uh, the program and so that they can accent and give informed consent for their little ones who actually receive the services. Mm. So um, are there any specific programs put into place from uh the department side, you know, to ensure that uh, successes and implementation of uh, uh, School Health Week is actually realized? From the department side, as I said, it's a advocacy by sensitizing the school community, the learners, giving them consent to take a, a home for the parents and guardians to sign. That is important because with that, uh, learners can now receive um, a whole range of information starting with health education um, and going to on-site service provision that includes learner screening, screening for vision, hearing, oral health, mental health, and even uh, receiving sexual and reproductive health services. And um, that is done jointly with the Department of Health and uh, of Basic Education and uh, Social Development but during the School Health Week, what is also important is that all the other relevant uh, stakeholders come on board, uh, like um, the partnership that we have seen on the ground with the South African Optometric Services, where they partner with the department and go and screen learners for vision, and they can even um, give them uh, spectacles. Mm. Uh, now I want us to talk a little about uh, nutrition. I mean, uh, where or what do we define, uh, you know, as a good nutrition for our little ones? And also what should typically go into their lunch boxes? Because, you know, sometimes you would see parents just putting in everything. I mean, pop, uh, uh, you know, uh, chicken there or, or meat. But what goes into the nutrition there so that it can be able to optimally assist, uh, you know, uh, the child? A good question, a good question, a good table. 
Uh, the good nutrition means eating a balanced and healthy diet. At most basic level, this means regular eating. So at least having your three meals a day, starting with breakfast. So that is why we see through the basic education, that's what we call the National School Nutrition Program, where learners are fed in, at schools before they can start lessons and also at lunchtime. But coming back to your question on the uh, lunch boxes, it's very important to understand the food uh, nutrients uh, because that start with your starches or your carbohydrates like you've indicated up is actually very important. Uh, the, the, the protein, which can be meat or fish or eggs or even milk, uh, the beans, uh, including your fruit. So we advocate that learners and, and, and or especially of school going uh, age should have at least uh, fruit and vegetables in their lunch boxes on a daily basis because that's where they can get the vitamins, minerals, ions, and fiber. And this is very important for their growing body and mind. Mm. Just lastly, before we go for an ad break, I mean, in terms of uh, the school feeding schemes, I mean, what are some of the meals that are given? to the children there and how healthy are they? I mean, you would see that uh, at least, you know, between the different starches that they have, they would also uh, have, uh, you know, one veggie as part of uh, uh, the, the, the food that's been given to the children there. Um, normally what goes into the pro, I mean, the, 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 the whole meal uh, in, 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 you know, a period of five days? Okay, um, I will not I will not speak on behalf of the Department of Basic Education as this is their core for a, a, a role and mandate. However, because we are working in collaboration uh, within the, 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 the school feeding program or the National School Nutrition Program, uh, it is ensured that the meal has got uh, carbohydrates or, spa or starches in the form of up rice, uh, bread and sam, uh, that is your carbohydrate or such as grouping. And then with your protein, uh, they, they give soya, uh, fish, eggs, uh, sour milk, beans and lentils, and sometimes uh, with meat. And um, I also understand that fresh fruit is served on a daily basis yeah. as well as the veggies because these are the sources of your micronutrients. Mm. Our guest this evening is Ms. Fenim Tuani, who is the Deputy Director of the National Integrated School Health Program at the National Department of Health. She joins us via Zoom as we recognize School Health Week taking place between the 7th and the 11th of October 2024. We continue the conversation with her after the ad break. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Much appreciated for joining us. Before the ad break, we started the conversation on National School Week that is promoted and acknowledged from today, which is the 7th to the 11th of October 2024. We continue the conversation with our guests this evening as the Deputy Director of National Integrated School Health Program at the National Department of Health, Feni Mutwani. She's still joining us via Zoom this evening to unpack this. Remember, Tony, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, you know, I want us now to reflect on uh, health screening programs for our little ones. Uh, maybe we can just take us through what is required and how do we then uh, do screen tests, uh, you know, uh, also looking in, into the issue of uh, uh, consent from uh, parents and guardians. Very critical data, though. Um, because these services are delivered in schools in the absence of parents, uh, caregivers and guardians, it's very important and crucial that parents, they uh, give or sign a written consent forms so that the school health nurses can actually provide these services. So these consent forms are issued out to the 
learners or children to take home and they outline all the services that are provided by the school health nurses, which ranges from health education, uh, on-site service provision, as well as um, referral and uh, including your vaccinations. So the parent will, it's, it's important for them to actually sign and indicate which services they want their learners to achieve. And the part of the health screening services, like I indicated, is your vision screening. Uh, we know very uh, well at this early age, uh, you know, the vision is not that much developed with young ones. So they are screened if they can see properly. And if not, they are referred to the specialized uh, multidisciplinary teams of the optometrist where they can be further screened and determine if there are any minor ailments that can be treated or uh, if they need spectacles and they are provided with that. They also cover hearing and screening, so that also, uh, you know, can be mistaken that learners are stubborn, they don't take instructions. Meanwhile, they've got ear infections or even hearing problems that are uh, easily missed at home. Uh, so those are other health screening. Your oral health, we know that with unhealthy eating and eating of sweets, sugary drinks and all that, um, learners or children often have got your oral health problems with uh, teeth that need uh, uh, um, if got holes and they are referred to the oral hygienist the dentist, and then they can be applied with fissure sealant because this is the very critical age to preserve those uh, 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 teeth including health education on toothbrushing and even providing them with those toothbrushes. Um, just lastly, before I let you go, um, Memotron, I mean, how can we better promote uh, health awareness and services among uh, school age children? I mean, back in the days, we would know that, uh, you know, uh, if you had what we call the immunization dots on the other side of your arm, uh, you know, uh, that's when, uh, you know, people like yourselves had visited schools uh, you know, how important is making sure that uh, there is proper awareness so that parents can be able to also make sure that, uh, you know, their children are actually receiving these services. And also, um, you know, how, what is it that you do in terms of the areas that are, you know, not serviced? I mean, you look at the far-flung areas, the rural areas in, in, in this regard. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, in this School Health Week, we actually concentrate on the never reached areas or the hatch to reach areas where we partner with local um, NGOs, non governmental organizations, your mm -hmm. private sectors, because they also provide our school health teams with additional resources in the form of transport or even the extra skills of the optometrist and uh, jointly with the Department of Education. All those far-flung areas are visited and these outreach services are provided to learners. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of having that consent form. So once the consent form is in place, then the learner can benefit and access all, access all the services, including your vaccinations, um, uh, which I must also emphasize and take opportunity for the to, to also emphasize to parents about the HPV, human papilloma virus vaccination campaign that is also underway. Uh, it started in September, it will uh, come to the end on the 31st of uh, October. So jointly, all the programs of uh, identifying barriers to teaching and learning and providing early intervention and preventions are being taken to the learners in and out of schools. And we appreciate uh, programs like you, Tabo, uh, because this is the opportunity where we also reach the parents and caregivers, all the viewers, to have information about the school health services and uh, for them to then demand the services, you know, in their localities. And also through the school governing bodies and other uh, associations, 
we also partner with them and urge them at their schools to be advocates for all the school health services in their areas. Member Swane, much appreciated for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, very insightful. We hope that, uh, you know, parents and uh, communities would adhere to, uh, you know, that message that uh, they should make sure that uh, they uh, provide the necessary uh, support to their children so that they can be able to receive those uh, services. Much appreciated for joining us. Thank you very much, Abo and team and the viewers at home. Thank you. Much appreciated. That was uh, Ms. Feni Mutwani, who is the Deputy Director of the National Integrated School Health Program at the Department of Health, uh, you know, the National Department of Health there, joining us to give us some more insights from the department on the plans put in place to spread awareness on School Health Week and how we can work together to implement some of these initiatives as uh, well. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto today. Much appreciated for joining us. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we continue the conversation on School Health Week and addressing multiple health needs of school age uh, children. We now switch gears to speak further on School uh, Health Week and a mental health aspect. We now welcome child psychologist Nogulunga Nene to unpack this further. Nogulunga, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Nogulunga, I'm not sure if uh, you can hear me. I mean, I, I wanted, you know, to speak about uh, the mental health within the school environment. Uh, you know, uh, are there any specific, uh, you know, criteria that needs to be met in this regard? Welcome to the show. Um, thank you for having me um, this evening. Um, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Properly. Okay. Yes. Um. I think uh, mental health uh, begins in utero, like like from from the womb, and then by the time children reach school, um, the issues of mental health, should, you know, would have been present by then. And also, like when you talk school, you're talking from French growing age all the way to high school like primary school and then high school and each phase has its own different uh, presentations that you will have in different um, age groups like developmentally your preschoolers will present with something different as 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 compared to children who are in the foundation phase your grade ones to your grade four they experience something different and then from grade four to uh, grade seven you'll see them being in another developmental stage where they also then present differently and, and, and so on and so forth. So you need to be also mindful of the age the child is in and is the presentation age appropriate. And also uh, the best place actually is early childhood development to start assessing for any concerns. Those are your preschoolers, you know, because we as clinicians and mental health clinicians and anyone who works with children prefer to like curb the problem from preschool because then by the time they come into school age, some of these things can be resolved and it's not too late to, to, to assist the children. You know, um, maybe for for example, if your child has speech and hearing, or uh, you know, a problem with their fine motor and coordination, those things can be kind of dealt with early on in your in your in your preach growing ages because by the time they hit grade one, all these things then start impacting their ability to learn, you know, their ability to engage in class and, and so on. Some of them present mostly with ADHD, you know, anxiety mm -hmm. and depression and anxiety in children is quite is can be too. Um, in those ages. And if you keep ignoring it and waiting for later stages, it becomes very difficult to manage. So I'd always say the earlier you intervene, the better. And mm -hmm. I think most schools have a sense of how to manage it, but some actually still struggle and don't know when to refer and how to refer and where to refer. Um, and there's different channels that you can follow. 
um, mm. to do that. So, Nogunuga, yeah. you know, I'm interested in finding out, I mean, you touched on the issue of, uh, uh, you know, uh, mental health in children in school environment and also in a, at home. Um, you know, I, I want to know the impact. Mm. What impact does it have, uh, you know, um, especially physical health, um, you know, what impact does it play in the child's overall mental well-being? And, uh, you know, ultimately, their academic performances, obviously, somehow, somehow uh, it has an impact there. I think that's very true. I mean, when you work with children, as most people that work with children, you do know that the environment, you need to see the child holistically, including the systems that impact the child. For instance, us in the hospital, we don't only just look at the school problem, and we also look at the environment they're from. How are the home circumstances? You know, you get children not just in nuclear family, mom, dad, and themselves. You find there's extended families, other children are, are in placement, so other children are, are coming from um, children's homes, everything like that. All those impact on, the, on how the child will be in front of you. And if there's a mental issue or a mental illness that presents at, at, in, in that moment, you need to see, does it impact the child at school and at home and in other places? How does it impact the child's relationship even with peers? How does, for so a simple thing like a child playing, you know, uh, for us it's diagnostic how the child plays. How do they play with their peers? Do they play next to them or with them and so on? Those sort of things become telltale signs. So the environment is important. That's why we always need what we call collateral, that's information from the caregivers of the child and from the school. And before you can even conclude on say, this is the definite diagnosis mm -hmm. that you want to treat and want. And also when you treat, you need to think, is it viable, that treatment? So the environment that the child is from, the system that the child is from is always important in the treatment plan. Uh, just lastly, before I let you go, uh, Nogulung, I mean, when it comes to mental health matters, I mean, do we still find that there is uh, you know, a stigma associated with mental health. How do we go about breaking that stigma, especially when it comes to the parents and guardians of those children, so that we don't perpetuate, uh, you know, the narrative that there is something wrong with the child if they struggle with the, with mental health? I think um, this is a perfect month even for, for awareness because it is me uh, Mental Health Month. And I think the theme is on children and, and, and suicide, uh, particularly. I think um, the stigma, uh, how we can uh, also stop it is the talking about it, not just in October, but throughout the year, um, every day and all the time to, to, to reach out to the schools. Um, if they don't know where to go, the, the local clinics, there's NGOs, there's uh, hospitals that do have mental health spaces that they can always approach. Um, it shouldn't just be when a child has a crisis then you come and see a psychologist, you know? There should, there's so much we can do more preventative work than actually dealing with the crisis when something extreme has happened so that people can know even where to get help. But it needs to happen all the time, not just on Mental Health Month. Mm. Uh, Nogulunga, much appreciated. Uh, thanks for that, uh, you know, wonderful insight, especially uh, this crucial month of uh, mental health. Much appreciated for joining us. That was uh, Nogulunga Nene, child psychologist, speaking to us more about the school health week taking place from today, the 7th uh, to the 11th of October 2024, uh, and uh, shining the light on the importance of mental health challenges and in kids and tackling some solutions there on that note that's how we wrap up today's episode of soweto today remember we love hearing from you feel free to talk to us about this episode send us an email it's soweto today at soweto tv don't see it is a call us whatsapp us at 081 and the rest of the team is good night from us and thank you for watching